White Rice Sensei here. Welcome to my video playlist. This playlist is designed to teach you how to use your devices to input Japanese. Now this is important for people who want to speak and chat with Japanese people, have homework to do in Japanese, or just want to get better at reading and writing. So here we go. This is video one for iOS users with iPads, iPhones, and even the older iPod touches. Now, Apple iOS comes with two built-in keyboards for Japanese. They are the Japanese Kana keyboard and the Japanese Ramaji keyboard. This video focuses on the Japanese Ramaji keyboard in the QWERTY format. If you're looking for another form of input, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel now and go ahead and leave me a comment with which type of input you're looking for. Chances are I'm working on making that video already, so just stand by for it to come out. Getting your iOS enabled device set up with a Japanese keyboard is pretty easy. So using my iPhone 11, let's get started. First, go to your settings and scroll down to general. Click general and then scroll down to keyboard. After clicking keyboard, you'll see at the top, there should be an option for keyboards. And at this point, you can add new keyboard. Today, we're going to use the Japanese Ramaji keyboard. So go ahead and select the Japanese Ramaji keyboard and add it. That's all there is to setting up your keyboard. Entering Japanese words using the Ramaji keyboard is actually really simple. If you know how to spell a word using Ramaji, just start typing it in. And as you can see, as I type the word atama, which is your head, the keyboard will recognize that a is the hiragana a, and ta or ta is the hiragana ta, and ma is ma. As I type that in, the word will show up in the autofill up on the top of the keyboard there. When I find the word I want, I just click on the appropriate selection and it'll fill in the word in the line of text. I want to demonstrate the power of the autofill feature on a Japanese input on the iOS. So first, let's start with a word that's usually spelled in hiragana, strawberry or ichigo, ichigo in Japanese. See, as I type in ichigo, the autofill populates with a hiragana word, which is the most likely scenario. So I'll go ahead and tap that and the word is input. Now let's try a word that's in katakana usually. For example, karaoke, karaoke, which we call karaoke in English. As I finish the word karaoke, you'll see that the word populates in katakana. So I'll go ahead and click on that and it fills into the line of text. Next, I'll pick a word that's normally done in kanji. For example, watashi, watashi, which is me or myself or I. As I type in watashi, you can see that it auto-corrects or autofills to kanji. There's even some cases in Japanese where a word would have both kanji and hiragana or kanji and katakana. So let's look at the word tempura, tempura, which is a type of fried food in Japan. So as I finish the word tempura, you can see that half is in kanji and half is in hiragana. Go ahead and click that and it populates into your line of text. There are a few unique challenges that come along with using Ramaji to enter Japanese characters. One of those would be making the small tsu character and also lengthening the vowel with the dash or hyphen that you see in a lot of Japanese text. So let's look at the word saka, saka, which we call soccer in America or football in Europe. So when I type in saka, you'll have to double the K consonant in order to get the little tsu to come up. So as I type S-A-K-K-A, you'll see the small tsu appear. But saka also has a long ah sound at the end. So to designate that in the text, I need to push this lengthen button, which looks like a dash or hyphen. And you can see it's sitting there right next to the L key on the keyboard. I'm going to show you another word that has the lengthened vowel sound in the middle. That's the word for steak in Japanese, which is the katakana word suteki, suteki. As you can see, I'm going to type S-U-T-E, then I can push the lengthened vowel key next to the L, followed by K-I. And there you go, the katakana for steki comes up. Another thing to look out for is sometimes we need to make small characters, like the small ya, yu, or yo. So if you're in the middle of typing a long word like kyushu, and you make a mistake at the end, 
and you need to back up and retype a small character, to save time, you can just click the L button on the keyboard and then type U, that's Y-U, and you'll see that it'll insert a small U into the middle of my word, Kyushu, so I don't have to start all the way back over at the beginning. One thing to get used to on your iOS device is that the words as you type them continue to grow inside of a highlighted text field, and they'll continue to grow until you either select something from the autofill bar or until you hit the button down at the lower right that says Kakute, Kakute, which means to confirm. If you don't occasionally click something on the autofill bar or Kakute, you're going to end up with a lot of problems when you need to go back and make a correction. You're going to have a huge string of text all in a highlighted field. So be sure to click on Kakute or click on the autofill bar every once in a while. Now just like in English, iOS devices will start to adapt to words that you use frequently. For example, I live in Sasebo, and as soon as I type in Sa, my phone will suggest Sasebo, so I can save time by clicking on Sasebo right away. Two benefits to switching over to a Japanese keyboard for entering Japanese is that you're going to start to recognize a lot of characters you didn't even think you know as you type them in Japanese and they show up in your autofill. The next is that if you're ever in Japan, you're walking around and you need help from a Japanese person, you can just show them your phone and ask for them to enter something into your phone, for example, in a Maps application or on the web, and they'll be able to use the Japanese keyboard to find something quickly to help you find your way. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you'll switch over to a Japanese keyboard as soon as possible. I know for me, as soon as I switched over, I saw a big jump in my ability to read and write in hiragana, but also to read kanji. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and stand by for more videos in this playlist designed to teach you how to use your technology to increase your proficiency in Japanese. See you next time. Thanks for watching to the end of this video, but guess what? Our relationship doesn't have to end here. Why not subscribe to my channel by clicking over here or like me on Facebook at White Rice Sensei, where each week I post lots of new things like free Japanese lessons and ideas and tips on how to make your life in Japan much more enjoyable. Hope to see you again soon, and Jane!